One thing that I find interesting about Point o Pro is even though it was around for years prior to when it honed in on the Black Panther Party, right? It was created in 56. It didn't start attacking the Black Panther Party until the 60s. Uh, prior to the Black Panther Party, they had uh, zoned in on the Weather Underground, Students for a Democratic Society, the Communist Party USA, various other socialist and Marxist organizations, Puerto Rican liberation movements. Hell, even the Klan at one point found itself in the sights of Coino Pro. All those organizations, all that uh, organizations, all that time. And yet the majority of the policies, the majority of the attacks by Coino Pro were on the Black Panther Party in a concentrated period of time. This is pointed out and the numbers are given by a historian in the uh, documentary, The Black Panther Party, Vanguard of the Revolution, something like that. It's an awesome documentary. It's free on YouTube. Definitely watch it if you can. Um, something else that's interesting that was also pointed out real briefly at the end of that documentary is that at the end of Coinal Pro, Hoover basically was of the opinion that it was no longer necessary, that they had already pitted everybody against one another. And we are now 50 years uh, post Coinal Pro. It's been 50 years, and we're still proving uh, that Coinal Pro uh, worked. We're still proving. Hoover Wright, the director of the FBI, um, we're still focused on each other, attacking each other, instead of unifying and attacking our enemy. Quoting COINTELPRO documents, the anarchist point of view is the most disruptive element in the new left and should be capitalized on in the most confusing ways. That's a quote from the from the FBI. And what are the anarchist points of view that they're referring to? It's this uh, rejection of communism as authoritarian. They were rejecting the advancements of the international working class in the USSR and Vietnam, for example, uh, as authoritarian. And so in this trend of the FBI to exploit this ultra leftist weakness in anarchist movements isn't uh, something that went away. In Freedom of Information Act uh, obtained documents uh, from the FBI in 2012, they showed how the anarchists were infiltrating animal rights, environmentalists, and anarchist organizations, right? And they were even setting them up, you know, with explosives and stuff like that, like they do. Um, and uh, and a quote from the FBI at that time from the documents is anarchists are not dedicated to a particular cause. And we're talking about the anti-authoritarian anarchist here. There's lots of other types of anarchists that are more focused on an anti-capitalist approach to their ideology, right? And so they uh, support the USSR and Cuba and Vietnam, etc. And this uh tactic by the state isn't even just uh ha hasn't just been used here in the united states look at the reichstag fire trial in nazi germany right hitler goring goebbels they blamed the reichstag fire a uh, fire on a german parliament building on four communists who got off and a uh and a former communist, now anti-authoritarian, anti-USSR, uh, Marinus Vanderlub or Vanderlub, I don't know how to pronounce his name exactly, um, but he ended up paying with his life. And we don't know exactly his involvement in the Reichstag fire. It's very controversial. Um, but one of two things are very likely, that he was made a patsy because of his ultra-leftist uh, views. He was running around Germany setting fires. Or two, that because of his ultra-leftist views, he actually went so far as to get in bed with the SS to help start the fire. Um, so this uh, state exploitation of uh, ultra-leftism within anarchist uh, movements isn't something that's even you know new or just American.